Welcome to the laboratory introduction for Chemistry 121 online. Since this is a laboratory class, we will go over details and techniques you need to learn in the lab, even though we will not be going in person this quarter. We will include standard lab practices as part of our work. And there will also be instructions for how we will approach labs given the online only format. In this video, we will discuss lab safety, notebook keeping, and the accuracy of measurements and go over the lab syllabus that I've asked you to read in advance. The lab can be a challenging part of the course because we have to prepare for the next lab as well as complete the post lab from the prior week. Our lab work strongly supports the content from lecture, so it can be challenging because it integrates what we have done in class and extends those concepts. Don't underestimate the time and importance of the lab work. The lab is a significant part of the grade and requires a lot of time to prepare adequately. Some of that preparation time can be reduced since you will not be performing the labs in person, but do read the procedure as if you are going to do it so that you can achieve the course outcomes for the lab class. First, we will go over the syllabus starting with the sections that says laboratory work on page four, I believe. So that will be located under course resources. Oh, I forgot to rearrange this. Um, I'm going to put this at the top to begin with. Here is our syllabus. And scrolling down to the lab section on page four. So many of these address our normal lab expectations. Then we'll check out the laboratory section on WAMAP where you will find links and notes about how each lab will be implemented this quarter. If you have not had a chance to read through the syllabus, specifically all of the laboratory sections, pause the video now and read it. Make note of any questions that come up so we can clarify anything that remains unclear. In the lab, safety is the most important consideration in everything we do, and that starts with dressing appropriately. The safety video provides this information as well, but the main points are that your feet need to be covered with closed shoes and your body must be covered to just below the knees. Hair must be tied back and students who do not dress for safety cannot enter the lab. Our labs require that students wear goggles from the time they come into the lab until the time they leave, even if it seems like there's no danger. That's the law. Okay, so let's get to the chemistry comp content part. It's incredibly hard to take a real-life process and put it into a linear format and to go from that linear format to the actual real-life tasks. Combine that with learning about new glassware and techniques and I strongly advise you to read the lab manual pages about 10 times. The first time through you're just getting familiar with the steps and approach but try to connect the purpose with the content in lecture. Once you have a sense of what the steps are, make some notes or underline the verbs so that you can see the bigger picture. How do the parts of the lab relate to each other? Normally we keep our data in a bound notebook. Notebooks conform to strict formatting rules, such as having bound pages and writing only in pen. These requirements ensure scientific integrity. Once you understand the lab, Prepare your notebook by writing the scientific purpose. This should not be to learn or to understand, but instead to determine the main result. When we come into lab, we put on our scientist hat. We don't come into the lab to be a student, but to practice science. So look for that scientific purpose as you read the lab manual pages. The next section in the notebook is the method or procedure which is a good place for diagrams or bullet points of the main activities you'll do. You can write anything that helps you organize the work that you'll be doing. After that comes the data section. Copy the data tables into that section ahead of time so they are ready to just record the data. This is very helpful because it can remind you to do all the steps. For example, maybe you need to weigh the cylinder before you put water in it. The empty space in your data table can remind you not to get it wet first.
Once the lab is done and the data is all collected, you can start the calculations section to do all of the work processing your data. Since it is the last section of the notebook so far, you will not run out of space. Remember not to erase or use pencil, just use a single line crossout and turn the page. The notebook does not have to be pretty, it just has to have everything in it in the correct format. Sometimes you will do your calculations in their own section and then put the value back into the data table on the previous page. You can use the lab report pages to guide your calculations as well as the final section in your notebook. Uh, let me scroll ahead here. Oh, here's the notebook sections. Uh, you can use the lab report pages to guide your calculations as well as the final sections in the notebook, the discussion conclusion. The notebook entries should always end with paragraph of words. Ideally, this should restate your main results and give some discussion of sources of error. These are errors that could affect anyone doing the work. This should not include things like doing the calculations wrong or not following the procedure. Experimental errors are things that can happen to anyone, even with good technique, such as water splashing out of the container without you noticing. If that happened, would your calculated value be too high or too low? Those are some of the things you can include in your discussion conclusion. Keeping a notebook is a big part of the lab outcomes for this course, and it is separate from the lab report sheets where I will grade your actual work. The lab notebook is something you can bring with you to a job interview, for example, to show that you know the policies and practices required in lab. While we are online for class, however, I will not be collecting and grading notebooks. Once your notebook is formatted for the experiment, find the lab manual pages and complete the pre-lab exercise. Sometimes this will require calculations, which can appear in the calculations section of your notebook. In many cases, a nearly identical assignment will appear in WAMAP. Notice that the values given in your WAMAP problem may differ from the numbers given on the lab manual page. There may also be procedure questions or safety questions on the pre-lab exercise, and those answers can be found by carefully reading the lab manual pages for the experiment. All of this background reading here. The lab this quarter will take many dif take different forms. In some cases, there will be an in-lab assignment where you'll answer a single question to obtain the data to copy into your notebook. Be sure to copy down the data carefully and do so before the assignment closes. Let's see if I go back to here. You can see I have a couple of assignments listed right here. The post-lab assignment will be available for the following week. Use the data from the lab to calculate the results, answer the questions, and complete the WAMAP assignment. In certain cases, an image of your paper can be submitted instead of answering questions within WAMAP. You can download the app Cam Scanner to convert photos into a single PDF. Some labs do not involve calculations. For those labs, you can simply leave out the calculations section from your notebook format. When calculations are required, you will often find that the pre-lab exercise provides a model of what you will do in the post-lab calculations. Try to be specific with your post-lab answers, restating the data that support your results when it's relevant for your answer. The lab report format can seem repetitive sometimes, and it is. The format provides sections for scientists to quickly find the information they need, such as procedure information or just results, by going directly to the section of interest. This format follows the way scientific journals present information and ensures scientific integrity. If you have questions about those topics, please do ask. You can ask on Zoom or in the forum. 
Now that we have covered the notebook and report format, let's take a look at the course website in WAMAP. If you have not watched the website video tour, you may want to take a few minutes to watch that first, right here. As you enter the main course page, you can scroll down below the calendar to the laboratory section. Clicking on the title opens up information for each lab that you can see all quarter long. These are notes and tips for the specific quarter and include supplemental websites and information to help you complete the lab. Lower down, you can also find links to the assignment which will open when they are due and close when they are overdue. You can also access this information through the calendar by clicking on the day and then clicking on the link below the calendar. So there's the pre-lab assignment and here is the lab information for our first lab. You will find the lab manual pages below the notes for each experiment. One approach for the quarter would be to download those files now and print them to create a lab manual for the quarter. The lab manual is your primary resource for lab information and the lab report assignments all quarter long. Here's the procedure, there's the pre-lab, you see it's clearly labeled, and then the data tables that you'll copy into the notebook. The informational blocks Will be, all, will be there all quarter, so you can always find the original lab manual pages again. Remember that the lab portion of the class is not, not just a large component of your grade, it is also a major outcome of the course and closely supports the content we learn in class. Please use the forum to post questions and answers about lab topics or any topics throughout the quarter. You can always click this title bar to get back to the main page and you can find the forum up at the top or over in the sidebar. Clicking on the forum you'll see there are two pinned posts. One for our synchronous Zoom information. This is for our sessions in Zoom. And back to the discussion forum. Uh, the other is um, the completed worksheets that we'll be doing in class so you can check your answers at any time. If you have any questions, you'll simply add a new thread and uh, ask your question in that forum. It's a good idea to look through the forum and make sure that your topic has not already, has not already uh, been asked. So make sure you keep up on reading the forum, uh, but these pin posts will help you get information for the class all summer. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to working with you this quarter.